What's up, guys? Welcome to the show. It's Jerry Miller. Thank you for joining us on a Tuesday. Thank you kindly for tuning into the I Love Seville show. we got a great program lined up for you. We have Ahmad Hawkins in the studio, in the house. This guy, fantastic people. Um, he and I, like I said, have so much in common. He, of course, a, a bleeds orange and blue, loves sports inside and out. He's a father. Uh, we're both fathers. Um, we both create a ton of content across social media that features our passion. Small business owners, um, both both committed to uh, to the, to Charlottesville and leaving our footprint in a better spot. We're gonna have a fantastic conversation with the ball hawk here in a matter of moments. Um, I want you to join in on the conversation by putting your perspective or your comments in the Facebook comment section on any of the seven channels that you're watching this program on. And I will certainly relay it to uh, Ahmad Hawkins. Um, thank you again for joining us. We'll thank some of the sponsors that make the program possible. First one of our favorite clients is Interstate Pest and Service Companies. It started in 1969 with the first generation. His name was Mr. Wells. And Mr. Wells started this company with one truck and a dream to build a company. It was his personal truck. In 1969, he'd go to his first home, service it successfully, and then find the closest payphone and call his next customer and say, may I come to your house now? Today, Interstate Pests and Service Companies is a four generation strong family business with a Commonwealth wide footprint and almost 100 employees on the roster. We also give some props to Scott Wagner, of Scott Wagner Chiropractic and Sports Medicine, good friend of the program, also one of our clients here at VMV Brands. Dr. Wagner, whether it's chiropractic care, sports medicine, or physical therapy, changing people's lives, making Charlottesville a better place. Who's got your back? Dr. Wagner's got your back. Um, give it a like, give it a share. Harris Tolber, you are the uh, astronaut of the spaceship. My friend, if you go to the studio camera and you welcome the ball hawk to the show, Ahmad Hawkins. Um, Ahmad, good afternoon. Thank you for... Uh, spending some time with us today. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, man. Just glad to be here, Jerry, and uh, ready to talk all uh, things sports. Or I love it. Got. I love it. I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait. How about since this is your second rodeo on the show, Yeah. how are things been? What's new in your life since you last came on the I Love Seville show? What's new? Uh, what's new is a new year, but uh, it's the same grind, the same passion, and the same vision, just to continue to grow uh, the Shut the Hell Up Juice brand. Um, I added the Petty Hulk. Um, I love the Avenue. Petty Hawk voice. You know, my alter ego. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's about it, man. Just gearing up for the Wahoos and their next, this upcoming season. And um, I guess since we last, I was last up here, um, I'm now um, part sideline reporter for UVA football. So I fill in for Jay. That's awesome. Um, from games here and there. I really love how you have built um, this brand. Mm -hmm. And this brand is like, multifaceted and super dynamic. You have Petty Hawk, who's a little snarky and <laughs> likes to poke fun at people. You got the ball hawk in, in, in your personal brand that's analytical and mm -hmm. positive and, and really championing folks around him. Yeah. You got the MC piece. You yeah. got the merch piece. Yeah. You got the content and podcast creation piece. You're on the radio. You're on television on CBS 19. We see you all over UVA football. Mm -hmm. I mean, just talk about the vision and the hustle and the hard work. You know, man, just trying to uh, create a different avenue. Um, we see the conglomerates, the big brands like the ESPN, the Fox Sports One, and what those gentlemen do and, and women that's on TV and all that they do and the professionalism that they show. And um, I just want to blend both worlds because everybody understands that I'm in a community. I'm around a lot of kids, around a lot of folks that wouldn't be on TV, and I just want to be their voice. So I'm um, just trying to be that, that perfect medium and uh, not trying to have any limits because, you know, too many times we try to put ourselves in a box. And just showing that a uh, young guy from the 757 can come make the 434 his second home and, and uh, share all that I've seen growing up and just trying to create a legacy for my kids and for the people after me. I love it. I love it. Nikisha White says, yes, 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 ball hawk. <laughs> Kevin Higgins has already got a question for you on UVA football and Ahmad's uh, prediction to win the Coastal. Kevin, we will get to UVA, and we're going to get to sports a matter of moments. Terry Cadell, Richard Allen Fox, John Craig, thank you kindly for joining us. Give the show a like and a share on any of the streams that you're watching. Um, when you think about, uh, I think about this a lot more now with, uh, with a son, and my kid is younger than your two kids. My mm -hmm. kid's 16 months old. Um, puts things into perspective. How does your uh, son and daughter uh, look at what you're doing here? And like when you go around the community, yeah. you get recognized all over the place. 
I mean, how do they respond to that? They must love it. My son thinks it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, we share the same name, so of course he he loves it. Uh, my daughter, she can grasp it a lot more than he can. I mean, she's, she's older. 13, yeah, yeah. You know, she's a rising eighth grader now. So just seeing that dad has his own YouTube channel because she's into YouTube and hearing me record in the comfort of my own home um, as far as my podcast and my radio show and hearing callers call in and coming through the switchboard and through the speakers so they understand a certain time of the day daddy can't really come out the bedroom because he's holding his, show, holding his own show. Um, they love it, and they get a kick out of us just being in public and somebody just coming up to me just picking my brain about sports. So um, it's a gift and a curse because sometimes you want to just spend time with your Being family. the DL, yeah, right? But, but at the same time, man, I embrace every time somebody comes up to me because it's always a gift to me. I know people always say it's, it can be a curse, but I think it's just always a gift. Nikisha says you're definitely a celebrity in town, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Lordy Eats, she the real celebrity. She got the great food right here, um, close to Buford Middle School by uh, GoCo. So we should get her on the to, show. Yeah, you go to Lordy Eats, definitely okay. get on the show. Nikisha, well, you got an open invitation. Anytime you want to come yeah. on the program, Damian Banks, my boy's watching the program. The head That's of the my BCBA. Guy. That's my brother. He Damian got, Banks is the so, man. So now that both of you guys are here, so Jerry started me on my TV path. Damian Banks really put the battery in my back and challenged me to be an MC, and it helped groom me to what I am today. So I'm always forever indebted with you, you two guys. So anytime I could get you two guys in the same building and I can glorify you guys at the same time, I'm going to take advantage of it. Well, you know what we should do? And, Damian, I mean this. Why don't we get you and Amon and a couple other guys and do a straight-up BCBA show? You might have to have a little um, Kevin Garnett Area 21 bleep out because yeah curse. those guys curse a lot. <laughs> i don't mind that <laughs> no fcc here you know, just for your sponsors man you know yeah. you make sure they represent it well <laughs> uh ball hawk can turn any program lights on my bro my boy is straight lit that's from damian banks right there larry simmons keep doing them big things hawk who's 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 yeah. uh oh, we'll wow. get to your questions here guys in a matter of moments how about the hustle of building a business man I mean, you are grinding. Yeah. Um, you are grinding morning, noon, and night. You are one of the best at creating content. And I do this for a living. Mm -hmm. You do this for a living. One of the, the best at creating content in Charlottesville and Central Virginia. Mm -hmm. You're on every platform. Um, I love the new alter ego, Petty Hawk. Mm -hmm. I love that Petty Hawk has merch. <laughs> yeah. I love the brand that you're building. I mean, talk about people do not understand the hustle yeah. For for being in people's feeds constantly. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, it's easy. Let's do this. It ain't easy. It's not easy. It's a lot of hard work. You gotta have a great support system. Um, my loving wife, Crystal Tinsley. I mean Crystal Hawkins, main name Crystal Tinsley. She bought um, the initial yeah, she podcast bought the equipment. equipment, right? Yeah, she bought yeah. my initial equipment. Right. Um, my sponsors, Abra Insurance, um, upgraded my equipment. So that's why, you know, they see me with uh, camera now and the switchboard's better. So shout out to Billy White and Charlene White, Abra Insurance. Um, my, my newest sponsor, Connor Murray Realtor, nice. um, he has invested in me, and um, th that helps out a bunch. And then behind the scenes, Corbin Hargraves, who's actually recovering from a broken ankle, he's been my mentor, my business advisor for years. He doesn't like the camera that much. He also um, provides the championship trophy for BCBA. Uh, he's done a lot for me. And I just got a team around me of people that just make sure that I'm always on my grind. How's you know? the BCBA doing? BCBA is fantastic, man. It's fantastic. Well, we down to our final four this Sunday. Uh, we got Jelly Fam versus. I want to say Jelly Fam is playing. Oh man, they're gonna kill me if I get the, they watching get, right get now. The games wrong. <laughs> That's how you know I'm just the MC and I just look forward to the fights. Uh, but I think, I think they're playing. Put it in the stream, Cairo. Damian. I think they're playing Team Cairo. Okay. And then I want to say Takeo is playing uh, Team Lake. And if I got them reverse, I know I got the four teams right. But regardless, wherever teams play, it's going to be an outstanding, outstanding atmosphere. I think the game's going to start at 5 p.m. this Sunday. Afton Brooks is watching from outside San Antonio. Glenn Harrop, welcome to the program. Sarah Hill Buchinski and Croze, thank you kindly for joining us. Questions, comments, put them in the feed. I will relay to the ball hawk, the man, the myth, the legend himself. <laughs> Antoine Johnson says it's Cairo hawk. It's Cairo. <laughs> I, I know I always get that. Zip them up. That's why I say to zip them up. Jelly versus Cairo, Damien says. Uh, Take over in Lake. Take over in Lake, yeah. yeah. That's going to be a bloodbath. Uh, it's, why is it going to be a bloodbath? Because you got cool gray, you got uh, Demario Maddox, Blue Shoes, and then you got Adam Pickett, who's been electrifying as a rookie this year. Um, 
Yeah, that's gonna be a bloodbath. You know what? I gotta give you and Damien um, some serious props. When when I start knowing the names, yeah. I mean, Demario <laughs> Maddox, when Cool Gray, mm -hmm. when when I start knowing the names, when when I know that West Bellamy is like the Draymond Green of the BCBA, yeah, right? Low budget We're, Draymond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he really can't dribble like Draymond. You gave him some grief about having the shortest highlight clip. He did. Ever, he right? did. He had three highlights. <laughs> I thought it was pretty damn good though. No, no, no. Don't get me wrong. It was They're good. all just inside jokes. It's always love. I always tell folks, when I joke guys on the mic, it's love and respect right. because this is their craft. But it's entertainment also. So De um, Devin Gentry, Kelly yeah. Richardson, yep. Cool Gray. When the I mirror the Devin names, Gentry. Man, that's a testament to you guys. Yeah, I mean, I come up with them on the spot. It's just, you know, the Lord has blessed me with being quick with it. And I just look at a guy and I look at how he shoots and warm ups and I come up with a nickname. Sometimes they're great and they love it, and sometimes they don't love it as much. It was a guy a couple of years ago that played with a team, and I called him KD Hair because of the grain of hair that he had, and um, he didn't like it too much. So, In Ingrid <laughs> Fagan says, hi, Mr. Hawkins. Uh, oh, what's going on? Hello there. Who's that? You just put me on the spot. Now I got to think. <gasps> it's got to be, a, what, a former student? Yeah. If someone's calling it's you a Mr. Parent. Oh, it's, it's a parent. It's a parent. Yeah, it's a parent. Okay. All right. Welcome to the program. You got a lot of folks. Well, hold on, hold right on. Now. I know it's two different Fagans, though. So it, it, either a parent or just a supporter of the BCBA. Okay. So okay. they'll correct me if I'm um, wrong. I will, I will put anything positive um, that you guys put in the comment box and relay it to the ball hawk himself. Um, Larry Simmons, oh, that boy do got the gift of gab. Yeah. Uh, Larry Simmons says, <laughs> my and Francisco, welcome to the program, baby. <laughs> Keep doing big things, Hawk. Who's, who's, who's? Um, a lot of folks watching. Robert Green, ball hawk is what a former athlete, now professional, should Robert look like. Robert T. Green. He building to be as great mm -hmm. off the field than us. Second to none, a hashtag right there. Robert uh, T. Green's a great guy, man. Yeah? He's a great guy. And he's an entrepreneur himself. Tell me about him. Um, post game, I always get his brand mixed up. And he'll put it in the feed. But he played arena football like myself. Now he invests in the future and the financial future of professional athletes. Um, the young man that got drafted by Green Bay that played at Michigan, played defensive tackle. Um, basically, he represented his, his self, started his own brand. And I just forgot his name just like that. And like I said, Robert will give you all the information. But basically, Robert is changing the culture. He's, he's educating athletes on their financial worth and how they can take care of themselves and not really needing agents in the long run and building their own brand. And um, that's what Gary did. I mean, he, he, he basically branded himself before the draft even took place. Do you feel like a leader? Everybody looks at you like a leader. Do you embrace the role of leader? I embrace the role of being a leader, but I'm not a guy that's going to be rah-rah and say, follow me. I'm going to just say charge. Lead by example. I'm going to go charge. I'm not going to say, hey, go get them. I'm going to say, you know, that uh, what was the movie with Mel Gibson um, when he was the warrior? Braveheart. Braveheart. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to fight down with the troops. I'm going to lead. I'm going to go down there in the trenches with them. So that's the type of leadership role that I want to be a part of. How has your mindset changed? Were you 40? I'm 40 now. Dang, yeah, dude, you're 40. 40. That's why I'm running so much. I don't want to look 40. I'm 40, but I don't want to look. Dude, how many people are telling you you don't age a lick? You hear that all the I time. I appreciate it. I definitely appreciate it. You, it's dude, not, it's not like a you're secret. You 25 years yeah, old. It's not a secret elixir. I, I drink black sea oil and apple cider vinegar and try to eat right. But um, I don't know, man. Just was, just been blessed with not being able to age as fast as others. How, uh, how's your mindset changed the older you got? It's starting to slow down. Yeah. Um, I'm more selfless now. I used to be very selfish. I used to be very, like I told you last time I, I was here, I used to be the jealous type. Um, I was a, a diabolical hater. I will always try to tear down others to elevate myself, and that wasn't the right way. And now I'm trying to elevate others without being in the spotlight. Of course, my job calls me to be in the spotlight, but I'm always trying to big up others and show folks that is a lot more than just me out here trying to make it big. I love that. Christopher Eagle, welcome to the show. Ray Cadell, thank you for joining us. You're getting a lot of props. Um, and we have the name that we were looking for in the feed, uh, Rashawn Gary. Rashawn Gary, yes. Defense alignment out of Michigan, playing for the Green Bay Packers right now. Basically became his own brand. 
Freddie Jackson watching the show. He's doing big time yeah, things. Yeah, love no ego. Love no ego. Yeah. He's come on this program. Freddie Jackson, I love some Freddie Jackson on this program. He, he hooped the season of BCBA also. Dude, he does some crazy highlight shots on social where yeah. he's stroking it from like mid-court or yeah, like doing play, some Steph man. Curry. Yeah, yeah he, he can, can play. play. Yes, yeah. sir. He can play. I love it. All right. Well, we got a lot of folks asking about some ACC perspective. Okay. Uh, Joe Sanford, Monticello's finest. Welcome to yeah. the program. He's watching in uh, Massachusetts right nice. now. Joe, are you in Massachusetts? I think you're in Massachusetts. Um, about if we talk UVA football, I think we got to start with Perkins. Got to, got to start with the head. I mean, it's that guy is dynamic. He's nasty. Mm -hmm. He is a threat outside the pocket. He's a threat throwing. He's a threat running. He's got a year of seasoning under yeah. his belt. Um, I think he is underrated as a passer. Very underrated. Um, and, and I think people just think, athlete, this guy can't throw, and that's just absolutely wrong. This guy's got a cannon. He's accurate. Mm -hmm. um, I really see – I love the guy. I love what he does for the team. I hope we have a Perkins waiting to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce Perkins to you shows yours. Yeah. So Bryce Perkins was a guy that had a neck injury when he was at Arizona, went to JUCO, um, reinvented himself came all the way across the country to the University of Virginia. Nobody knew what was going on. Um, I watched so, so many highlights of him. I called him an avatar on my podcast before he even stepped foot on campus. And um, I knew he can run. But one thing that surprised me the most about him was his willingness to be a better passer, not forcing the issue, not saying I'm going to sit in the pocket like Donovan McNabb did in the later years of the Eagles. That still burns me that he should just stand in the pocket where he can run. But Here's a kid that understands what the offense needs and what was needed to help, you know, um, better himself as a quarterback. The kid is dynamic running the football, but he's a natural leader. He can dissect defenses very well. He's very intelligent. And a lot of people don't say that about African-American quarterbacks. They always put him in a box of being athletes playing quarterback. He wants to be that quarterback. He wants to break the mold, but at his own on his own terms. He I doesn't. totally agree with what you just said right there. Why do you think that is? That's just because we're creatures of habit. It's no yeah. different than, than seeing a Caucasian wide receiver. Okay. You're not going to think he's fast. You're okay. going to think he's a possession receiver. Or Christian McCaffrey, when he was coming out of Stanford, I raved the about tailback. him. Yeah, I raved about him. I called yeah. him the Caucasian Reggie Bush. I felt like if he was an African-American, he would have been you know, on everybody's big board as the number one running back. Um, but he's showing you that he's breaking the mold. So it can go the opposite way. We sure. see Julian Edelman with New England. We saw uh, the receiver for the Vikings. Um, I just forgot his name. Um, where is 18 or 19? Salim. Yeah, yeah, Adam. So it, it can go both ways. But with the face of the franchise, which is the quarterback, they're held in a lot of scrutiny. You see the Cam Newtons of the world. You saw, we saw how Michael Vick was judged. Um, Dwight Vick watching now. Yeah, so shout out to Dwight Vick. Um, but you, you get guys, the kid at Ohio State when he came out this year, he wasn't mobile, and that was a surprise. So we, we have to reevaluate the way that we think. We got to evolve in sports, not just sports. Life in and general. Life. And I always tell folks, if life was like a, a sports locker room, we wouldn't have a lot of these racial issues. Oh, talk to me about that. It's just all about production It's just all and about performance. production, performance, and you as my brother or you as my sister. That's it. We have a common goal. We're going to take you for what you are, and that's what it is. We're not going to be on Twitter just saying this is what I've done for this race more than what this race did for that. Like, there's no type of competition. When it comes to politics in the locker room, it's just that's your belief, this is my belief, the common ground. Let's go to practice. Gerard Smith watching the show right now. Oh, yeah. Huge fan of Gerard Smith. Yeah. Future is super bright for Gerard. Um, Freddie Jackson says, love you back, Jerry Miller. We love some ball hawk, a.k.a. Ahmad Hawkins. Two awesome dudes together right now. Fun to watch. Bryant Witcher says, don't forget Wes Welker, fellas. Um, yeah. Damian Banks. Trap cop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fernando Gray says, ball hawk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dwight's got a question for us. Robert Green says, pre-postgame.com yep, is the company. URL. Mm -hmm. uh, Rico Reese, ball hawk, let me borrow a mic ASAP. <laughs> 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 Dwight Vick, Hawk is the best in the game. Love him, proud of him. Ask him who are some of the top players he's ever played against in college and pro. That's Ooh. a good question. Good question, now Dwight that's Vick. Big brother. He went to Hampton High with myself. He, right? was, he was the OG. He, he, he showed me the ropes his senior year, my freshman year. Um, he put that belief in me that actually springboarded my high school career as far as the big catch versus Bethel. I ran a slant, and I was terrified of going across the middle. 
Um, but he Why gave that? me some words. Five and, nine, buck sixty five, yeah, buck seventy. Yeah, I was scared. It yeah. had a big linebacker. They had Chris Morant playing middle linebacker for um, Bethel. But I took it to the house over sixty yards, and that helped us get to the playoffs versus Norcom. But some of the best guys I played against in college, of course, Peter Ward jumps off. Um, that dude was phenomenal. Florida State wide receiver. Yes, phenomenal. Short-lived NFL career. Yeah. I thought he would have been more uh, longevity, more mm-hmm. dynamic with his quickness. Yeah, what do you think with What do you think happened with Peter Warwick? I think – The height? No, I just think he didn't have the top-end speed a lot of people thought. Got it. He was more quick than fast. And then the emergence of Chad Johnson coming in, you know, after he came. You know, they, they had John Kitten as a quarterback, but, you know, Chad ended up having 1,000 yards receiving when he got there. So that kind of phased P-Dub out of there. Um, of course, Chant Bailey, when we played against him in the Peach Bowl, played against my was, brother. He was doing two-way then? Yeah, he was doing two-way. Yeah. Terrence Wilkins lit him up for 170 yards that game on three catches, but uh, he still he scored a, a receiving touchdown. He was touchdown probably returning too. punts too, wasn't he? Yeah, Champ? I don't think we punted to him, but okay. he did catch a touchdown pass to okay. kind of help give them the lead. He was one of my favorite players with the Redskins. Yeah, Champ was He was, was dynamic. Special. I never seen him. Now, as far as Also speed, with Denver. Yeah, speed-wise, he's one of the fastest human beings I've ever seen Yeah, in person. Yeah. Who was the fastest human being you've ever seen? The fastest human being I've ever seen was John Capel. Really? When I was in camp with uh, the Kansas City Chiefs in 2002, that summer. World-class that, speed? Oh, uh, he, he went to win the gold medal in the 200. Really? Dick Vermeil cut him and said, go run track. That's, that's your call. Why'd he cut him? He just was dropping balls. Yeah, I didn't have the hands. I mean, you got to think. So Dick Vermeil cut him, told him to go run track. Dick Vermeil releases me that, that camp, you know, at the end and tells me to go play arena football. And he was, he was a prophet. I mean, I, I played a decade of arena football and made a name for myself. He said it. You can go to arena football, make a name for yourself, or you can continue to go to NFL teams. Because he said, yes, you could play in this league, but I don't know what position. Mm-hmm. So you could probably play three more years in NFL, mm-hmm. or you could go play arena football for at least 10 years and be a known commodity. In hindsight, what do you think your best overall position was? If you could do it all over again, start from scratch. Oh, man. And was it a clear-cut football for you? Yeah, clear-cut football. Yeah. I mean, I, could, I think I was a great baseball player. I just couldn't hit the curveball. Okay. But I could steal on anybody. Like, my... I was taught by Danny Mitchell on how to steal bases, how to read a pitcher, uh-huh. and I picked up on that quick. Just sure. from the front heel, the front foot coming up, just I could just read their body language and when to just get a good jump. Uh-huh. Um, but if I could pick a position, I think I would still be a receiver, and with the offenses now, I'd be in a slot. I think I'd be terrorizing people in the slot. I, I played in a pro style with Coach Welsh, right. and I was a deep threat. So when I was coming out, I was known for running a fly route and a post route. In this day and age, I would have been running a lot of um, just mess routes, under routes, hammer routes. I would have been running everything short after the catch. I would have been Alameda Sakias, basically, if Ooh, I would have came here. I like that right there. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, I would have saw myself as him. What do you think his career is like, going to be like in the NFL? He's going to make the team yeah? in Atlanta. Either pra- I would see One him of the greatest at least the practice players squad. of all time. I could see him at least making the practice squad. I'm, I'm a realist. Um, he has an upfield battle, undrafted free agent, so... The main goal with him is doing what he's been doing since camp has started. Every day he's making a highlight. Um, 2001, I was with the Falcons. Every day I got a pick. Every day I got my hands on the ball. They wrote an article. They gave me the nickname Ballhawk when I was in Atlanta. And the only reason I got cut by the Falcons is because the actions of somebody else created a roster spot. And the guy that they brought in, Darren Gordon, was a defensive back also, but he was a known punt returner in the NFL. And I was the last on the chopping block. I didn't get cut because I didn't perform. That's why it's easy for me to say, yes, I got cut by Atlanta. But every day when I was with the Falcons, I got my hands on the ball or I got an interception. The first game versus the Pittsburgh Steelers, I was with the first nickel group. So who can say their first ever preseason game, they was out there with the first defense. I love it. Bo Dickerson says, Petty Hawk. I don't want any part of that, <laughs> but it's hilarious. <laughs> Bo Dickerson watching right now. He's a good friend of the program. Uh, this is a good question, and I got an Antoine Womack story from my time at UBA. Womack. Uh, War Mac. Not Womack. It's War Mac. W-A-R Mac. Carl Roberts, Roberts Jr. says, how good was uh, Womack from Phoebus? He was a stud. Womack stuck. was a, a physical He was a beast. Specimen. Oh my, I, can I tell you this story yeah. and then throw it to you? Yeah. Okay, so I remember at, while I was at UVA, he was driving around in a dope like the bmw blue. i thought it was a with Cadillac. a broke with a 
It was oh a, no, it was, it was a Cadillac. Cadillac. It was a Cadillac. Yeah. He had a Cadillac back like, then. And yeah. he would be bumping yeah. music all over grounds <laughs> in this Cadillac, and everyone knows it, okay? <laughs> I'm at the Biltmore, okay? I'm going down the Biltmore steps on Ellywood. He's uh-huh. coming up the Biltmore. Had to be a Tuesday or a Thursday. I had a couple beverages, yep. okay? All right, I'm not going to lie. I may have slipped and bumped into him. Oh, no. And Womack looked at me and goes, I will kill you. <laughs> and I was terrified. <laughs> I was like shitting my pants, yeah. terrified. Like that scared. Sh- and he was serious, dude. Yeah, man. He was not joking Womack around. Was that and I'm guy. like, I'm sorry, sir. And I just kept uh-huh. walking by him. That's my Womack story. How good was Womack? Womack was a guy that. So after our first year here, he got in some trouble where he couldn't train with the team. Right. Right. He missed all spring. He comes back fall camp for testing, bench, clean, pull ups, you name it. Right. He benches. Close to damn near 400 pounds. He squats 500 pounds. Power cleans over 330. Runs a 4-4. Did like 20 pull-ups, and he's out of shape. <laughs> beast. beast. Out of shape. Bill D., his coach oh, in high school? Put him in a power eye. That was three running backs. It was, you know, two backs in front of him, and everybody knew War Mac was getting the ball, and there was nothing you could do about it. Just ran between the tackles, ran north, between south, the tackles. said, I'm going to hit you and run right yep. through I'm so glad when we were getting ready for the All-Star game, I got a chance to talk to him. And I was like, man, you need to come to UVA with us. Why are you on to Penn State? And he changed his mind. And he came to UVA instead well, of Penn why State. Why do you think it didn't uh, materialize into more in the next level? With Womack? Yeah. Knee, his, he had injuries, knee yeah. injuries. Yeah. Yeah. He just wasn't in the cards for him. Um, he was just special, man. He was, just, he was just a special athlete, special individual. He's staying up in, in Richmond right now. He works out daily with Wally Rayner. Um, and uh, he's legendary, man. He's legendary. He's, he's the one guy that Anthony Poindexter hit that he talked to. He talked to Dex. Nobody talked trash to Dex but Aaron Brooks because he couldn't get hit. But if you could get hit, you didn't say anything to the captain. Womack talked to the captain. And what did Point Extra do? Knock his face off, and Womack kept talking to the captain. Really? And that's how we knew Womack was special. Was Point Dexter one of the best all around you've ever played with? Yep. Besides my favoritism to my cousin Sean Hamlet, he's the best free safety I've ever seen in my life. What made him so special? He had everything. Just, first of all, he's a great person, but just his football IQ. He made me see the game so much more differently. Um, Anthony Poindexter knew what you were going to run every time. Formation, down the distance, the, the hash mark of which the ball is lined up on, just how the receivers lined up, how the, line, how the running back scanning the field. He just knew who was getting the ball. And then Wally Rayner was just right there with him. And Adrian Burnham right there, back there with him. Like, those guys were just so smart, man. Like, he ran probably a 4'6", 4'7", 40". Wasn't super quick, didn't have huge muscles, but he was just a machine. The captain, man, this the, the living, like the best I've ever seen back there. Best George Walsh memory. And that question's being asked. Let me highlight, guys. Um, best George Walsh memory, um, Kevin Higgins. The, <laughs> Coach Wells, well, Christ. Well, well, the best Coach Wells story has nothing to do with football. It has to do with the weather. The man feared lightning, thunder, period. He see a cloud, get the hell off the field. It's going to storm. I'm not going to wait. The weatherman's always wrong. He just had a feeling in his body where he knew if it was going to rain. Like a rickety knee or just, something? Just something. Yeah. He could be just walking around the field with a little flap on his hat. And he'd be like, Christ, everybody get the hell off the field. It's, it's going to lightning. It was like, no, it's, it's just going to be a little drizzle. <laughs> It's just going to, you know, thunder. Christ, what are you talking about? This is my program. Get them the hell out there. Where's the horn? Give me the horn. He just sprays the horn. And lo and behold, while everybody's looking at him crazy, two minutes later, lightning starts striking. You never listen. <laughs> it's the reason why I'm the coach. This is my program. Get off the field. Even though he's saying expletives, Coach Walsh. And he beat us all off the field. He left us on the field. Like, he's talking from the stairs. You guys going to listen to me. Get off the field. <laughs> oh, gosh. And he's telling the, the equipment guy to blow the horn, and the guy's not blowing the horn fast enough, and then the horn gets stuck. 
and it's just like <laughs> people are loving this. The feed is blowing up. Give me another good impersonation that you do. Coach of, I mean, everybody knows I'm a comedian that won't do stand up. Okay, so I can. You should. A lot. No, 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 not I'm, your thing. I'll be the MC for it. Okay, like I could fill in between the acts. Okay, and if anybody ever need, has a comedy show, yes, I will MC a comedy show. Okay, and I'll I'll talk to the crowd, but I won't. I have too much respect for the, the guys craft. who can write jokes. Gotcha. You know, that's just, I wouldn't. It's but, hard. Yeah, it's hard. And I got too much respect for that. What's the best impersonation you got? Oh, man. I'm more of a, I'm a I, I, act them, I act out my impersonation. Okay. I, I don't have a lot of voices. But people know, like, when it comes to, like, BCBA, I could, inter, I could just imitate whether it's my good buddy Brandon Isaiah or Love Brandon Isaiah or, or West Bellamy, head coach he at Elmore High School. Yeah or, yeah, or I could do Marcus. You know, a lot of my good buddies, I could emulate them. Okay, and imitate them. But um, my the impression everybody knows me for is just Coach Wells, his voice, and you know, God rest his soul. When he saw me one time, he was like, "Hey, Ma, what are you doing these days?" And I was like, "Oh, Coach, I'm on the radio. I'm back in Charlottesville. I'm on WINA." He said, "Wait a minute. <laughs> I heard a guy trying to sound like me." I thought it was you. It's you, huh? <laughs> you always think you could do me. I do me. You can't do me. And I was like, come on, George. I can do you. What are you talking about? <laughs> Kevin right. Higgins says, that's awesome. Larry Simmons, Wiggity ain't playing with the lightning low. <laughs> See? <I> told you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we call Coach Wells Wiggity. Why is and that? he hated that name. Cause, Why? Because back then, that's when Master P was out and you gave out, like, you put the Iggities and did crazy stuff to people's names. So instead of Wells, we called him Wiggity. We'd be like, Wiggity, who called me that? That's not my name. Show some respect. <laughs> best pro coach you ever had? Best pro? Oh. How about best coach in general? You trying to get me assassinated right now. Cause all you my can name a few. I still talk to all my coaches. Yeah? Yeah. So I take a piece from every coach I've ever played for, even if I was a pain in the ass to them. So a lot of the coaches, I, I am a pain in the ass to coaches because I'm a why guy. If you tell me something, it's like, why? Because I want to master, and I don't want you to ask me that. I don't want you to tell me that anymore. So if I make a mistake, and you correct my mistake, I'm going to really get down to the, to the essence of the mistake. So you never have to say it again. That's good. So Coach, coach Powell, Andre Powell, who's actually with Pitt now, their running back coach, um, and Larry could take – well, Larry wasn't there yet but when he was my receivers coach. But anybody know my first year at UVA, me and him fought a lot, verbal warfare, to where I'd be, I was crying. I would cry on the field. Yes, I would cry on a football field, but then I would burn you on a nine route the next play. Um, he was – he did so much for me. He helped me transition from a boy to a man. Um, coach, coach Walsh is nearest and dearest to my heart. Um, coach Dick Vermeil for – kind of seeing the future and being honest with me because like I tell folks, I made that team, but he made executive decision of keeping a guy that was with him, that won a Super Bowl with him with the uh, Rams. He helped me see that the arena football was my calling. Um, let me see. We got Coach Lee who was with me in Europe, changed my life. Coach Seleski, who's probably looking on the live feed, Ron Seleski with the Grand Rapids Rampage, my defensive coordinator. Yeah, the list goes on and on, man. Um, Good is the enemy of great came from actually my coach Mike Daly for the Colorado Crush. Yeah, that's a um, great one. I was a, I was, so I had an arts and ego called Mr. Idiot. Okay. Where I would talk trash. Uh -huh. They see it at BCBA. I talk trash and I curse. Like, it's, I'm real violent with my trash talk, right? So my rookie year, he was with the Indiana Firebirds. Touchdown, Eddie Brown who is Antonio Brown's dad. Okay. So I knew Antonio Brown when he was small. Okay. His dad is a Hall of Fame receiver in the Arena Football League. Touchdown, Eddie Brown. Get out. Antonio Brown's dad. So I'm playing against Indiana. Touchdown. And basically, I keep him from getting the catch versus me. And I'm talking trash to Eddie Brown. And I start talking trash to Coach Daly. So that whole year, I make a name for myself of being a prick. I'm the ultimate prick. All right? No matter who you are, I'm cussing you out. And I had a great rookie. I led all rookies in interceptions. I had a phenomenal season. So my coaching staff gets fired. Lee Johnson, is who Coach Lee is, he's, he's a holdover. He's hired by Mike Daly. I get a phone call from Lee, like, Coach Daly wants to talk to you, our new coach. But you got to wait till you get up here. Fine. Coach Daly sits me down, like, let me tell you something, partner. 
you're a phenomenal player. So he's building me up, right? He says, but I got a dilemma. I want to cut your ass because I don't want to deal with your mouth. You got to, you got to do something about your mouth. And I was like, that's how I play. I got to play pissed off. That's Mr. Idiot. If you want greatness, you want me pissed. He said, well, you could do one of two things. You could do what you've been doing, and I'll give you a flight out of Colorado. Or we could work together on how to suppress it as far as being verbal to adults and just be verbal towards your opponent when the time calls for it. Okay. Let's work on that. So long story short, by the end of the season, he helped me kind of internalize my anger to where I could play well, but I wasn't so so much of an asshole. So, and he always would tell us, good is the enemy of great. Do you want to be good? Do you want to be great? And I was like, well, what, what's the difference of that? He was like, right now you're good, but if you do what I tell you, you'll be great. Good is the enemy of great. Be great at everything that you do. How'd he, you play with the change mindset? Man, I became a world champion. Um, I ended up becoming all pro, was a defensive player of the year because of his teachings. You oh. know, so he, he, he really, he really calmed me. Because I was, people think they, what they see in the BCBA is bad and the trash talk they see. I was a hundred times worse than that. Really? A hundred times worse. And Coach Mike Daly knew how to just bring, take it down a notch but intensify it in a different way. Dennis Haley says you still are. <laughs> <laughs> Hood Scholar says that's lit, man. That is lit. Love this discussion. Shout out to Travis, man. He got his PhD. He down there in, in the 75. Is that Hood Scholar? Yeah, that's Travis. Yeah. Uh, Dennis Haley um, wants to talk. Uh, first, he's giving you some props. Dennis Haley, big ups on the program right now. Big fans. Um, people want to, are asking about Chris Slade and Terry Kirby. I mean, two oh, legends. Oh, that's a living legend from legends. Tab High School, yeah. man. That's that's. I mean, five-star recruits that changed our, the dynamics of our program also with, with Sean Moore and Herman. But you talk about Terry Kirby, that was like getting Womack. That was like getting Thomas Jones. And like, people don't understand what Thomas Jones was coming out of the Big Stone Gap. Now he's a movie star. Thomas Q. Jones. Shout yep. out to the bro, Thomas Q. Jones. <laughs> um, he doesn't age either. Huh? He doesn't age either. No, he doesn't. He does. And he's a hell of an actor. He is. He yeah. was, he's on the, um, on the first series of Tales on BET. Check him out on that, man. Um, uh, the Vi a Violent Man, that's his latest movie that he has with Chuck Liddell. He's an MMA fighter. He was on Luke Cage. Um, he was on Mary Jane. He was good on Luke Cage. Um, he also was in the boxing. He, he was a part of the management team with uh, Stavern, the guy that Deontay Wilder put to sleep on the ropes. That made him do the limbo, but Thomas is in that avenue also. So Thomas Q. Jones, better known as TJ. He That's, was a beast. Yeah, man. I mean, an absolute beast. That's when I started uh, watching the team very closely. I mean, he was one of those guys that I feel like could have done anything, had a great pro career. Arizona Cardinals? Yep, Arizona Cardinals got drafted, uh, top 10 pick, was considered a bust, then went to, I think he went to Tampa before yeah. – he went to Chicago and, and New York. And then he kind of revitalized. New York and Chicago. Yeah. He's, he's he said the a world thousand on fire, yards especially back. New York. Yeah. yeah. He 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 he's bared down and he's JT Jets Jets Jets. They that two fan those two fan base love him. You were totally right. Arizona, Tampa, Chicago, the Jets, and close with the Chiefs. Yeah. He had two thousand five, two thousand six, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, and two thousand nine. You were totally right. He thousand killed. yards plus all the time. And then 2008, 2019, 2008, 2009, he had 13 touchdowns mm -hmm. and 14 touchdowns. And he, he has 10,000 career yards. Let's see if he gets into the Hall of Fame. 10,591 career yards. He has yards. over 10,000 career yards. Not too many guys can say they've done that in the NFL. And that should put you in consideration to be a Hall of Famer. 68 touchdowns, an 11-year career for a tailback. Mm -hmm. um, and then he also crushed it from a receiving standpoint. Another 2,000 yards in the air, another couple touchdowns there. Do you think he's a Hall of Famer? I'm just saying it's – Put you up in consideration. Yeah. I mean, well, um, what were you alluding to? Let's see if he gets into the Hall of Fame. You were thinking he's just because the majority, majority of the guys that ran for over 10,000 have gotten in. You know, um, me being just my analytical hat is he a Hall of Famer? I don't think you put him in the Hall of Fame, but he's in the Hall of He was that damn good, though. Did you have uh, who are the Hall of Famers you play with? Did you play with any Hall of Famers? I mean, Champ's in the Hall of Fame. You played against I played him. against Champ. Um, I mean, playing against Hall of Nah, I don't think. Oh, Terrell Owens. T.O. Uh, Randy Moss. Randy Moss. Yeah. 
as far as skill guys, I mean, linemen don't give me lying. You know, not, I'm not going to sit here. I'll pay attention to, you know, offensive, defensive linemen back then. Uh-huh. But I probably played, played on or against some linemen that's probably going into the Hall of Fame. Javel Rowe says, how long will it take for uh, Ronnie Barber to get into the Hall of Fame? Woo, that's a great – shout-out to DeVell. He's a, a loyal listener and caller and an analyst on the Ballhawk Show podcast. Um, Ron Day, I think, has a upfield battle. Really? I feel like it just because it just depends on the pitch that you use. He's got some rings. He's he, got one ring, right? Yeah, he, got a, he has yeah. a ring, yeah. With it that just, Tampa team. You need, you need a spokesman these days for the Hall of Fame. You got to have that hype behind you, the machine, somebody pumping you, uh-huh. in my opinion, to get into the Hall, it seems now. If you just looked, 15 years. At, looked at what he did, it's, I mean, he's like Charles Wilson. I mean, what he, did, what he accomplished as a defensive back, it shows longevity. It shows a guy that could go inside and outside and just perform at any spot you put him at in the defensive backfield. He should be up for consideration for sure. I remember as a senior in high school um, on the uh, orientation trip to UVA, I was a senior. My brother was a junior. My brother's at Jamestown High School. Mm-hmm. My parents drove us up. We went and toured, walked around grounds, walked through the Commerce School, um, and they had the uh, the lists of like your concentration in the Commerce School yeah. and the average salary. <laughs> and on the bottom of that board, it mm-hmm. was one of those peg boards where like the letters was on the board. Mm-hmm. On the bottom of the board, there was an asterisk excluding Tiki, Tiki and, and Rodney Mondale. Barber. Who signed multi-million dollar contracts <laughs> in the NFL? And I yeah. saw that I was like, "That's so cool." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> those dudes are awesome, man. Those dudes. And Rondé um, was the moderator during Coach Walsh's roundtable at his at his um, celebration. What was the difference between those two, person personality wise? Rondé seems like more of a behind the scenes guy, low key guy. Rondé, from what I, because I've I didn't play with those guys. From what I've been told, Rondé was more of one of the guys in Tiki. Mm-hmm. Say Tiki was more introverted, but and they say Rondé was more outgoing. Yeah, yeah, huh? From what I've been told, but when I meet both of them, um, I do have longer conversations with Rondé. It just seems like Tiki's pulled more when he comes in town versus Rondé. Rondé is sitting just talking, just have a regular conversation, which and he doesn't forget like a name or a face because he actually came up to me and said hello to me, which blew my mind. Said my name, I looked like wait a minute. <laughs> like, how did you know my name? Oh, come on. No, but that's just me. You yeah. know, that's just, that's just me. Even when I go around the players, like, you know, you, when you go talk to Bryce Hall or Bryce Perkins, just to see how they embrace me. Like, I'm not. I'm, how do they embrace I, I fan you? out when I'm around those guys. Like, yeah. I, I love, those, love those kids. You yeah. Know? How do they look up to you now? Like, big bro still? Like that? Like, or big bro and av- Like, they know I'm an advocate for them. Yeah. So, it's a little different when I critique their game okay you know because I had a relationship peace with them traveling with them and having an opportunity to just talk life with them they know when they see me on CBS 19 with with Damon or if they hear me on with Jay James at WINA and I critique their game they don't take it as negativity they know it's coming from a place of love so if I say yeah you're you doing know, Bryce your job has too. To, Bryce has to tuck that or he can't take that sack or he has to anticipate the receiver more it's not you hating this okay big bro is you know, telling me right. Or Bryce Hall, hey, man, you got to use your looking, looking, looking lean technique versus pushing the receiver away from you. You know, like the catch he gave up versus Virginia Tech for the touchdown. I told him, you're going to get beat by great plays. You're a great player. That was a great catch. You can't knock yourself down about that. The catch the tight end made, people don't realize we were the end man to man. We was in zone. He was on the opposite side of the field. So he was looking for work, and the tight end made a great catch on that sideline versus him. He didn't have to be there. He could have been Bryce Hall, I'm doing my job, and that ain't my man. But he went over there to try to be great, and the tight end made a great catch. They made two great catches. So you have fans talking trash saying, Virginia Tech saying, oh, we killed Bryce Hall. No, you made two great plays versus a great player. I could live with that. But don't make Petty Hawk serve you some juice by saying, hey, I could return the favor. And we could talk about the plays, but I don't want to tear down players on their other side because that's not my forte in college. I'm not into tearing down players in college. Right. I'll tear down an NFL guy. Yeah, You're getting paid. paid. Yeah, right, I'll tear you down. You're getting millions. But yeah. I'm not in the business of, of tearing down a, a student athlete. That's not my style. I love it. I love it. You're getting a lot of props here. A lot of people asking about the coastal pick. 
How, UVA picked did, up. How about that? How about that, man? I mean, it's been a how while about that? since I remember the excitement mm-hmm. and the positivity and the energy and like people itching for the opener. Yeah. Um, and that really is Versus like tangible it. right now. And it, and it, it, and it, it plays great for a movie script, you know? So people don't know, the last seven years has been seven different coastal champions, right? Everybody's won the coastal stuff of Virginia. You look at Virginia, they are one of the few teams that has their core coaching group still intact. Their dynamic quarterback is back. A lot of teams don't have quarterbacks or it's question marks. Have a first round pick that came back in Bryce Hall. We have talent on the outside receiver. We had talent at linebacker. They saw the recruits we brought in on the defensive line, our offensive line. We brought in transfers and they played better last year. The running back position is a question mark, but we brought in a known guy, Mike Hollins, out of the Louisiana area. So we get picked for the coastal, right? So you're gonna have on one hand, it's like, okay, we'll give Virginia just off of what the basketball team did. Let's pick them as the favorite. Some people are just saying that. But then you look at it. Some people are saying that in the feed right we're, now. We're the safest. We're the safest because Miami, new head coach, who's going to be their quarterback. Pitt, new, you know, they lost their running back. So it's just so many question marks. UNC, they got an old coach bringing in old excitement. Um, shout out to Dre Bly, though. He is on that coaching staff for UNC. So with, UNC, so with us. The defensive back? Yeah, yep. Yeah, was he at yep. UNC? UNC, yeah. yeah. All-American, NFL um, disruptor. I mean, whether it was interceptions or stripping and scoring touchdowns, Dre Blas, that guy, he's from the 757 Western Branch High School. Shout out to him. But um, as far as UVA being picked as the coach, though, it's a safe pick. That's why I didn't get excited. It's a safe pick. See, I ch- I, good as enemy are great. So when I talked to Bryce Hall or Bryce Perkins, y'all got picked just because y'all safe. They, truly, they don't really believe that y'all that good. They don't. Fans, they really don't believe UVA that good. Fans here really don't believe they that good, right? They waiting for the wheels to fall off. And guess what? They pick you first in the coast, and guess what they do to you? They throw pit at you opener on the road. And then your next ACC game is versus Florida State. And then your next ACC game against who? Miami, down in Miami. Brutal. They really don't believe that, right? That's why I said... Our mantra here at UVA is earned, not given. You win the Coastal this year, if you UVA, you earned it. Well, Your yeah. first three ACC games is Pitt on the road, Florida State here. You haven't played them in years. Yeah. They angry about being trash can Jews last year. Then Miami on the road with newfound excitement and Diaz coming Manny coming Diaz. Back. Yeah. Yeah, with energy. That's yeah. no easy task. No That's way. like murderous row. Yes. We're getting a lot of questions about uh, – national championship for a football team this is a tough topic no. then obviously they're saying for us like, here yeah they're saying baseball they're saying men's basketball we wins national championships way. lacrosse wins national championships it's very different when you have a roster the size of football mm-hmm. to win a national championship versus a roster the size of say a men's yeah. basketball it's comparing apples it takes and oranges. a lot it, it takes a lot to uh it takes a lot in football to win a national championship not taking anything away for basketball not taking anything away from a lacrosse team, our soccer teams, our basketball, baseball. And football is so many different moving parts. So many moving parts. So many things need to be perfect. The recruiting, like Coach Bennett and how he recruits, it's perfect for what he looks for here. Sure, because and his program. Guys, you're going to build guys up for two and three years. Right. And then, boom, you, they, everything hit last year. And now you see... What comes with winning a national championship? A lot of moving parts start happening, right? And football. Our three best guys were three years deep left. into the program. Yeah. Yeah. They leave. Exactly what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? And football, you're not truly allowed the opportunity to build, win, but come up short, if that makes sense. Like Coach Bennett, right? He was allowed to come up short, even though we we're ranked high and win the 20 games. That's still allowable because they're going to be patient. In football, if you keep flirting with winning the ACC and then you show up, like, they'll get rid of you. You know, football is it's less patience because it's the breadwinner. Sure. You know, it, it just is what it is. And the one thing I respect about Bronco and what um, – You like Bronco? What AD call it, what she did yeah. with Bronco and his contract. People look at it and say, oh, he got a contract extension. You look at how they – the verbiage, they reward him for winning. Incentivize him. 
It's not yeah. just you get a, a raise just because you're here. No, he don't get anything if he don't win. And that's what he wants. That's why I respect Coach Bronco. That's why on the first time I met him, I said I run through a wall for him. Because he was like, tell all, your, tell all your boys, come back. The doors are open for alum. Anything you want. You want to come to a practice? You don't got to announce and ask. You just walk on the field. Why would the alum shun for so long? Ah, man. So I, I Because there was distance there. Yeah, I can't really say because when I moved back in 2008, um, that's when Grove was still here. I don't know what happened between then that caused that fracture, you know? Um, I know when London was here, he was trying to build it up, but the product wasn't matching what he wanted to do. So it's hard to say, alum, come here, but then you're getting your head beat in. Even with Bronco, his first year, he got his head beat in. But everybody was just happy that he was open, open, open arms coming back. So I think the main thing that the alum appreciate now is there's not a lot of hoops to jump through just to get tickets for the game. And I'm just speaking for my band of brothers who don't like to be out in the forefront. When is the last time you remember excitement being like this? Was it the Shaw, Heath Miller? Maybe it was the Biscuit Hagens. Biscuit Hagens. Biscuit yeah. Hagens, yeah. yeah. Biscuit Hagens, yeah. Definitely that. Um, even the year where we went and, and um, ah, when did Michael Simpson, what was the year was that when he had the long touchdown run in the bowl game mm. down there in Jacksonville? History is not my strong suit. Golly. Well, it was around, you know, it was, the, I mean, London had a year or two when he's won, what, the eight or nine games? Yeah. And yeah. then he played Auburn and got, and got beat pretty bad. But um, just the excitement, just organic excitement. 2007. 2007. I just Googled. Okay. Yeah. It's organic excitement because what Caller is doing with just the sports program in a whole, as far as the master plan and building up the Olympic Center and expanding and just investing in money into our sports program and the football program, there's no way we should have the same carpet and the same – look of when I came on my recruiting visit. How's it changed? Well, Does it cha I mean, it's good. It's a lot it's more bling it's, it's and a, shiny stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it, we, we're evolving because we the, had young, to. the young people pay attention to the bling. Right. You can't compete with Clemson when they got a bowling alley. Right. I'm sorry. And Alabama's got a barbershop. And LSU, you could go to sleep in a queen bed as a locker room. I mean, That's amazing. it just is what it is. You know, even Virginia Tech, when she, so when we had our alumni weekend, she put up, you know, the Bamas, the LSUs, the Clemsons. But then she said, well, let's go to our rival. And she just put up how their weight room and their locker room look compared to ours. And indoor track is compared to ours. Okay, that's who you got to compete with, your rival. I know everybody get caught up in football 15, but you compete against Virginia Tech in everything because they down the street. Simple as that. Now, I know if you're a football player, I know, and I got uh, – teammates who have sons. You go to Virginia Tech, their, their coaching staff safe 15 years. We done beat that team down the street for at least a decade. They say that. So our counter is, well, we got 20, over 20 of these national championships at this school. Right. That's not as good a counter. It's not as good a counter, yeah. but that's just what we say, like, you're going to get everything. They're they going to harp on that. That's fine. But we still got to compete with the looks. Because if you get the athlete – and you get another one, and you get another one, because the coach is here. We about got a how coach. a football player is treated at Virginia Tech versus UVA? How are they treated? Yeah, like compare and contrast. Like a Virginia Tech, is a football player of Virginia Tech have an easier path in the classroom and more of a, you know. You want Petty Hawk or Ball Hawk to of answer a that? I, Both. <laughs> both. Petty Hawk will say, yeah, they don't do nothing. They just yeah. play football. But Ball Hawk is more level-headed in, in a realist. Um, I never went to class. I never played for them, so I don't know what truly how they are treated, but my big bro, Dwight Vick, who is well-respected, was in the feed. Um, he's a highly educated human being, and um, you make your own choices. Yep. Well, I say academics is look, look like held to a higher standard here versus Virginia Tech. I think absolutely, but that doesn't make them any less educated than we are. I just think the aura and how our student body carry themselves. You know, that's, that's, that's just the difference. That's just the narrative that's built. You know, in sports, it's all about the narrative. Yeah. The narrative is UVA is East Coast Stanford. Right. So we got to live by that. 
You look at how we they dressed on the game with the sundresses and the blazers. You know, that's changing just, though. Yeah, it's changing because Colin Cowherd would be giving us a whole yeah, time. Right. As he should. <laughs> I mean, as he should have. Thank you, Colin. Yeah, as he should have. I mean, wearing ties to the game is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, you end up taking it taking it off. You can I mean, be like Buzz was when he was coach at Virginia Tech. He had his suit and by the end of the yeah, game on that side. It's hundred degrees. He, you know, he was soaking wet. Right. 100 degrees. Javel Rose says it's the Gator Bowl versus Texas Tech. Hood Scholar says 2007. That was the Mike Hal Simpson. Javel says, I can't wait for Scott to be Scott Stadium to be at capacity again. A lot of people yeah. going up the feed right now. Yeah. Um, it's going to be tough to get the Scott back at capacity just for the simple fact of. You don't think the opener will be sold out? No. Really? I don't. It's just so many ways you can watch sports man that's true and that makes it tough that's true that i mean there tough. is something nice about and i love i bleed orange and blue just mm -hmm. like you there is something nice about sitting in front of a 60 inch tv in air yeah, conditioning football you want to watch like you got you got your laptop yeah. you got this in your hand yeah you don't have wi-fi issues mm -hmm. the cold beer's right there exactly the food is free yep. not free but it's from the grocery yep. store versus the concession stand yeah there's something to that i mean if you did like jpj is still a novelty as far as it's still exciting to be a part like to go to jpj yeah the energy so that's going to sell out yeah and you inside right climate control right it just depends on what the, what the weather's like and how we looking you know i put i, I put it to you like this I can see fan if we take care of business, and I don't like to talk too far ahead, but if we haven't lost a game leading up to Florida State, that's still Florida State. Are you sweating balls on the sidelines when you're on the sidelines? Oh man, I'm a I'm a nervous wreck. Yeah. I'm a nervous wreck. Yeah. If I'm not if I'm just being a spotter for Jay, I'm a nervous wreck because I'm really You're into the game. I'm really into the game. Now if I'm in my sideline gig, it's a different then I'm mindset. even killed because I'm looking for a lot of people don't know as a sideline reporter, I'm not being an analyst, so I'm not going to give you X's and O's. I'm looking for the injuries. I'm looking for the storylines. Just storylines. Yeah. So my mindset, and that Dave Kane taught me that. He was like, "Look, you're so used to being an analyst. When you're on the sideline, you got to be a sideline reporter. So you got to look for storylines. So if somebody get hurt, go check that out. After every series, check the huddle out. Check the temperature. See what the coach is telling them. Seeing how they're receiving information. So I'm telling a story to help." tie in what they're talking about upstairs. So You're a lot of folks it. don't understand. Like sideline is was totally different for me because I was so used to saying on fourth down, I mean on third down, they got to do this. They allow me to do that to help piggyback on what um, Cub is talking about. But, you know, my job is to give you the stories. What's it like with the guys at the booth? It's awesome, man. They, man, I'm the little brother. You know, I'm the guy that has the aspirations, uh -huh. but from a different lane. So they help me be more professional. Because that's my, I think my biggest hurdle is I'm not professional in the sense of the cookie cutter. So I can be turned off. So I sent my resume into the ACC network. But if you listen to my show, it's no holds bar. That's going to scare some folks. And I'm fine with that. So but I'll you continue let them to learn. Know that you can play any game they need. Yeah, though, right? so I'm continuing to yeah. learn and continue to sharpen my, my, my craft on that professionalism that they want. So everything happens for a reason. And I'm not going to question what God has in store for me. So the more sideline gigs I could get each year for the Virginia Sports Network. More resume you can do. leverage. Exactly. And that's what I'm going to do. So you got to crawl before you walk. How would I look like leapfrogging without, you know, I wanted to be the sideline, full-time sideline reporter here. So, and that's why I told God that I want it. I can't just change and say, oh, no, nah, forget that God. I want the ACC Network because it's on TV. No. Nah. I, I'd rather have a foundation so... When that luck comes, I'm prepared. Because people, you know, when luck happens, you have to be prepared for it. When opportunity happens, you got to be prepared. So people always ask for things, but they're never prepared. And then when somebody thrusts it upon them, they're like, wait a minute. You really? I could do that now? Well, you asked for it. So I'm going to make sure I'm prepared. Um, Carol Schwab Barnett giving you some serious props. Love having Ahmad back. Particularly love his comments on UVA sports. Um, he knows what he's talking about. Having the aspect of being a player. He keeps it real. He's authentic. That's from Carol, uh, Carol Schwab Barnett. Thank you, Carol. Kelly died. The bankers watching. Sandy Fuel, the automotive titan, watching the program right now. Um, we filled an hour. It's been easy peasy. Yeah, um, always. Per usual. Um, Always, man. Your feed is fire, guys. We will archive the show in totality on ilovesevil.com. What do you? Uh, what's your prediction? You got a coastal win? I just got us winning the coastal. Okay. Um, so going to the ACC whatever the championship. record is. Yeah, I just got us going Lose to the ACC it to Clemson. 
We'll probably lose to Clemson. Okay. Um, it, the, unless, you know, Trevor has an injury and they have a quarterback that that can't really facilitate the offense. Uh, but I, may, I think the best thing for this program is to take the next step forward. You got to win nine games. You won eight last year. You got to win nine games. You got to show you can beat the Florida States and the Miamis, uh, especially Miami on the road. Definitely got to beat Pitt. We've never beaten Pitt since Broncos been a coach. So if you can start out beating Pitt on the road, I think that's huge. Tone. That's huge for the fan base. Um, that's huge for the donors. That's huge for our athletic department. And um, salute to Ms. Carla Williams. Man. I think she's doing a phenomenal job, her and her team, of being receptive to the information that the alums give to her, uh, former players and, and donors alike. Um, last question, and then we'll close here. This is a good question, and I can relate to this question as a new father, too. Um, Kevin says, what do you want your kids to think when they look at you? That's a deep question. Um, I just want my kids to know that their dad never had limits, and a dad never said that I can't do something. Um, just be respectful and dream big. That's, all, that's what I always tell my kids, you know, especially my son and my daughter, is that I don't get caught up in, in the stats, like how many goals my daughter scored, how many touchdowns or goals my son scored, you know. What's your effort? I always look at your effort and if you're enjoying it. You got to love what you do, right? I play football. You can't fake football. I play the sport that you can't fake. Either you love it or you, you get brutally harmed. And anything my kids want to do, you got to make sure you love it. And you got to enthrall yourself in it and understand there's going to be some failures. But get up. Because once you finally do reach that mountaintop, you're going to look at your failures as steps. And that's just what it is, man. I mean, I never thought I would be where I'm at right now. Um, I wanted to be in the NFL. I ended up being in the AFL. Um, I wanted to be on ESPN. I ended up on NBC with Jerry Miller. CBS 19 with Damon, um, Virginia Sports Network, and WINA with Jay James. I'm seeing BCBA. It, it, that's legendary to me. That to me is legendary because that's, that's, for the, that's for the community. Yeah. That's forever stamped of being a part of the fact that Damian Banks allowed me to be a part of the BCBA movement and is stamped in this city, in this community. I wouldn't trade that for any championship that I'm in. I'm not just saying this. The, to just blow smoke up at anybody's butt. But to be enthralled in a community and be respected in the community means more to me than being on a mural or anything because the everyday people is what you have to see every day. And they control and they write your story for you. So if my son could go somewhere and my daughter could say, hey, it's Ball Hawk, your dad, he's a great person. That means more to me than somebody saying, hey, your dad was a great player, because that's past tense. But a ball hawk's a great person, that's present tense. Love that, dude. I, that was on point. I need that. that was that's on what point. I want. You, you are well-spoken. That was on point. Kelly Richardson, Charlottesville High School's finest, one of my favorite players. Yeah. From the What's Jefferson up, Kelly? District. Let's eat a birthday cake together. She's my birthday cake partner. Kelly Richardson's watching <laughs> right now. Huge fan. She's family. Kelly Richardson. Uh, what's up, Jerry? Juice tuning in. You guys make a hell of a combination. Um, I'm just following this man's lead. Um, Damian Banks says, you the man, Ballhawk. He the man, man. I'm the man behind the man. See, he's the same as me. He, don't, he doesn't want the spotlight. Even though I'm on the mic and that's like an oxymoron, I don't like the spotlight. But it's a reason why I tell folks, the reason why I talk so much during the games and I make sure I say everybody's name, everybody's stat, every, like, because I want involved. you to know right. who has the ball where they at with the ball. Because you may be changing a diaper, you may be buying a drink. So you gotta know who has the ball, who shot the ball, who assisted, who got the block. That's just me. And it makes it easy for, for Rashad when he does the stats because he doesn't have to look up. There's nothing, and I'm gonna close on this and I'll throw it on, it's so easy to talk with you. I mean, <laughs> you're so good at this. There's nothing I enjoy more now than walking home, and I grind, dude. I'm clocking 70 hours. Oh, I know you grind. Yeah, there's nothing I enjoy more now than walking into the house mm -hmm. and seeing my 16-month-old see me, yeah. walk to the door, Priceless. smiling. Dude, it's like getting me choked up right now. Yeah. It's like, 
it hey, melts my heart, man. And and, that, and so his, and your son's doing his, push-ups his, his, after Yeah, my you. son's doing push-ups after routes. me. He's running routes. He's running routes. He's watching highlights. So the part about me is I pull myself out to my students at Lugo McGinnis Academy every day. And when I come home, I got to pour myself into my craft. And those one or two hours left in the day that I have before my son goes to sleep, it's poured into him. And for him to be able to understand that I'm not neglecting him, I'm just trying to build a legacy that he can be proud of is priceless to me. Because I know it's times he feels neglected. And I know it's times my daughter feels neglected. And I know it's times my wife feels neglected. And I appreciate that I was allowed to build my own um, platform to which I could control my hours to where when the summer comes, I could just say I'm not going to do a lot of shows because my kids are home and I'm home now. Without that support system, man, I self-destruct. My wife always said, well, what would you be without me? And I'd be a knucklehead without my wife. Point blank, period. My accountability system would have been gone. And, um, you know, nobody asked to be a street person. Nobody asked to be a thug, you know, the hate you give, the infants. But if you got a positive avenue, once you choose that positive avenue, make sure you got a strong support system around you. Not me too, people, but people who can hold you accountable, that you can respect, that's going to piss you off, but it's going to sow that make seed you a better in you person. that makes you great. Yeah. You know, because I'm around people that could send me a text like, hey, man, you need to take that down. Or you shouldn't have said that. Or you shouldn't have argued like that. You need to apologize. You talk it on social? On social media all yeah. the time. Yeah. Twitter. Because you keep it real. All the time. Especially on Twitter. I, I've calmed down on Twitter. I mean, I've had Carla Williams email me like, hey, you need to calm down on Twitter. I know you love the school, but you don't want to go that route. That's not, that's not a good look for you. She's not worried about the, how I'm representing the school. That's not a good look for you. Because I know what you want in life. How many ADs I have a candid conversation like that? Probably not. <laughs> you know? Probably she's Without the only saying, one. Without saying, and by the way, don't come back. Yeah. You know? Probably she's the only one. Like, come in. Let me give you a hug. Calm Patty Hawk down. He too protective. You can't respond to everybody. So I, I'm forever indebted to And it's to hard for us because we're so alpha and competitive. Oh, yeah. And I'm, we're so, yeah. like, we like to be right. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It's no you better thing to be right, right. man. <laughs> I know. I know the feeling. <laughs> but I admit when I'm wrong. I admit when I'm wrong. I apologize to somebody quick. I might not admit when I'm, when I'm wrong in the moment, but yeah. I will in hindsight. Yeah, I will in hindsight. <laughs> yeah. But I try to always, you know, say on my podcast, yeah, you were right. When we talked about this a couple episodes ago, I like to give guys that spotlight to when they're right. Well, and it also breeds a loyal fan base. Yeah, I mean, if I was always right, it would be a terrible show. Because sometimes I'm throwing stuff out there that's wrong just to see if somebody catch it. Somebody would be like, man, that's wrong what you said. Exactly. I'm glad you listened. Thank you. So This is one of the best shows we've ever done. We filled 70 minutes. It's felt like seven minutes, and it's a testament to Ahmad Hawkins. Shanette Brock Gray. Uh, Ahmad, you speak very well. Much love. Appreciate that, Shanette. Um, we she just bought a um, redemption shirt, too. Um, if you go to sthujuice.com, I did a special championship shirt for the Virginia men's basketball team. Nice. And um, I just, she actually just purchased a shirt. Why don't Hope we do this? We uh, give you an opportunity to, to plug all your platforms. Oh, man. Yeah. All right, well, you go to schujuice.com. You get your Shut the Hell Up Juice Apparel, Petty Hawk. Um, I would say if you're in the Charlottesville area, the easiest thing to do is go to my Facebook personal page of Maya Hawkins. Just send me a direct message. If you ever see a picture or anything on Instagram or, or Twitter that I have on that you want to purchase, that's the easiest way to just contact me like that. Meet in person. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, I produce the shirts myself. In my home, um, have my business license, so I make the shirts myself. I could deliver them to you right then and there. I take pride in my turnover being quick, so if it's more than two days, I get pissed off at myself, trust me. So, um, But as far as my podcast, you can go to Apple iTunes, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, anything that has podcasts, Spotify, the Ball Hawk Show podcast is on there, Anchor, Podbean, just go there. Shout out to my sponsors, Abram Insurance. Shout out to um, Connor Murray Realtor for believing in me. If you want to be a sponsor of the Ball Hawk Show podcast, again, you can reach me um, on Facebook, theballhawk9 at gmail.com. You can email me. And um, season three of the Ball Hawk Show podcast will start Monday. 
6 o'clock, live on Facebook, call-in show, great platform. I just moderate. JaVel will tell you, he calls into the show. You are the analyst. You call in with the topics that I provide, or you can have your own topic. You control the narratives. I just combat them. Everybody hears me talk enough during the week, and I let my fans be the, be the stars of the show. I love it. I love it. Mansa Musa, uh, he'll even pull up on you with the shirt yep. and hand a, do a hand-to-hand -to -hand transaction. I, will. I, I will. love it. I love it. Um, you're also getting some props from Danny Lynn Pritchett. Without Ahmad Hawkins, I don't know where a lot of us would be. This guy you, is big time. You and your wife and your kids, your whole family, you mean the world to us. Keep leading us. You're a good man. Um, great show today from Danny. Um, this is what we'll do. We will archive this show in totality on ilovesevil.com. This show was fire, baby. I mean, start to finish, it was lights out fire. We will take the audio from this show and load it to iTunes. Nice. So you can put your earbuds in, you can stream <laughs> it to your car, you can walk around town and listen to the ball hawk. If you want to watch the ball hawk, dude's a handsome fella, <laughs> go to ilovesevil.com and you can watch the video cast of the show. We close the show the same way every single time. We do not make this about religion. We do make it about treating other people how you want to be treated yourself. It is the golden rule. It's amazing what that mindset will do for our community. Treat other people how you want to be treated yourself and watch the positive viral impact it will have across the world. Charlottesville needs this more than ever. The Commonwealth needs this more than ever. Lord knows the country needs this more than ever. It's the golden rule, guys. It's the I Love Seville show, Monday through Friday, 1230 to 1.30 on the I Love Seville network. Enjoy your afternoon. My man, that's a great clothes, man. Easy peasy. Look at that. You crushed it today. One more thing to do is we got to get the hero.